So I want to welcome everyone to our first community transition event. Um, my name is Allison Clark and I'm the community engagement manager here at Sheltering Arms Institute. And I want to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, the purpose of the community transition event is to continue to provide resources and patient education related to stroke recovery. Our goal is to support our patients in their healing and recovery after discharge from Sheltering Arms Institute. Each session and will include a clinical education presentation, as well as an update from a community partner who will share information on programs and services. So in the future, these events are going to be held in our conference room at Sheltering Arms Institute, but, but you guys uh, came to the first one, which is perfectly fine and we're happy to have you. Uh, but due to the COVID restrictions, we've had to change these initial events to virtual meetings. And I appreciate all of you logging on with us today. So today's topic is going to be on home safety and modification, and will be led by our clinical leader and occupational therapist, Molly Shriver. Hello, Molly. Hey. Um, you're going to be learning today about home modifications, tips for daily living, and emergency preparedness and resources. And today's community partner representatives are Allison Shapiro, and Stu Neal, and they're going to be sharing information on resources and uh, websites that we think will be helpful for all of you. And then also talking a little bit about the startup of our virtual stroke support group, uh, which will be in the beginning of 2021. So thank you for, for joining us, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Molly to begin her presentation. Hi everybody, thank you for having me today and spending some time with us. Um, as Allison mentioned, I plan on speaking to you about home safety, home modifications, and some emer um, emergency preparedness items. Most of what I'm going to talk about is common sense, but it's so much common sense that we tend to not think about it um, until we have to. Often we find ourselves when we're going home or thinking about preparing to go home, it's an overwhelming feeling because we think of the very big things. But once you break it down and realize that there are a lot of small things we can do to change our environment or our routines, we can go home um, safely without the major things having to occur. And sometimes that's all it takes. So I'm gonna open up our presentation and we'll get started. All right. Let's get going. All right, as I mentioned earlier, um, after a stroke or other injury or illness that affects your physical strength and coordination, basic daily tasks can feel like a big ordeal. Um, things as simple as dressing, grooming, bathing, eating, things that you did and didn't think twice about before your illness or injury can leave you now feeling overwhelmed and just wondering where to begin. So today I'm gonna offer you some tips and techniques and even equipment adaptations, resources that can make these things less taxing and in turn, just leave you feeling more independent and confident. To start off, <laughs> my biggest go-to thing to remember is to save your energy when at all possible. Um, for people who have their routines, sometimes this is difficult because we don't like to change our routines, right? Routines are comforting, we tend to feel more comfortable, more safe when we're doing things that are routine and familiar. But I always tell my patients the goal is to go home and stay home. So if making a few adaptations can allow us to stay home, then the adaptations are worth making. So a few things to remember to save your energy. Always, and I'm not sure the therapist is allowed to say this, but always sit rather than standing when you can. Um, just performing a task that takes 10 minutes, those 10 minutes in standing can wipe you out. Whereas if you sit to do it, can really leave, um, leave you with a greater energy source and allow you to continue with your day. Plan ahead and reduce the number of back and forth trips during household tasks. Again, think ahead, plan accordingly for self-care tasks and minimize the number of sit to stands and transfers required. Um, also remember to schedule in rest breaks and divide daily tasks accordingly. Again, it's better to allow yourself a five to 10 minute break and then be able to get back to it um, and continue with your day rather than 
insisting on finishing a task before you take a break, maybe push it too far and end up exhausted or worse injured and having to take more time to recover just to get back to baseline. Always consider simplifying your task. Consider dressing more simply, so fewer layers, fewer buttons, fewer snaps. Um, keep frequently used items, the things that we keep with us or use with us um, often throughout the day. Try to keep those together and within easy reach. Combine your efforts. So if you're already sitting and you can dry off there like after a shower, put your clothes on there, rather than going to another room and then sitting down again, try doing that. Then also delegate, which is one of the hardest things for us. Um, you're all superheroes. We know that we can do it all, but that doesn't mean you have to. All right, let's start with eating and meal prep. So upon returning home, if meal prep is something that is important to you and something that you need to keep up, then the first thing is to practice cooking and practice meal prep with somebody around who can assist as needed and also help you problem solve any difficulties or safety risk. Again, plan ahead for meal prep. So you can freeze and store leftovers that can be microwaved or warmed later. Um, consider slow cooker options or now Instant Pot, which is my favorite. Um, those meals are often an all-in-one source. So less prep, fewer things to clean up, just throw it all in one and then it's done later. Um, if you're transporting items back and forth in your kitchen during meal prep, something you can do besides carrying multiple items is a cookie sheet or something simple like that that you can transport everything all in once. Or if you have room, rolling carts are excellent. Also something to consider is a meal service. Um, many options now exist that provide pre-portioned meals that you just have to put together or they often can give you pre-made meals that just require heating up. Bathing, bathroom safety is my soapbox issue. So bathing and maintaining personal hygiene after a stroke is a big process. Um, to ensure your safety and maintain the highest level of independence possible, it's recommended to break bathing processes down into steps. So first you need to look at adapting your environment, then getting ready for bathing, bathroom transfers, and then actually washing and hygiene. As always, plan ahead and move slowly. Make sure your environment is set up and well prepared. Have all of the items needed for the bathing process available and appropriately placed prior to beginning your task. Um, make sure someone is nearby and available for help if needed and have a way to notify your helper. It's always the dignity issues that are the most important to us. But because those are the most important to us, we tend to take more risk than are necessarily appropriate. Um, so again, adaptations are worth making so that you can have a little bit more privacy, a little bit more dignity, but also the people who are around you in your support system can feel safe giving you a little bit more room. So preparing your environment. Um, there are so many assistive devices and dur durable medical equipment that are available that significantly increase your independence and your safety with bathing tasks. So not to name all of them, but long handled sponges, um, an extended shower head, shower chairs, transfer benches, grab bars, non-slip mats. Um, all of these are accessible through Walmart, Target, Amazon, and can significantly improve your independence and your safety. Some um, common sense things to think of, try liquid soaps rather than bar soap. Um, regardless of how good your grip is, bar soaps will always be dropped. Um, but if a bar soap is greatly preferred, a shortcut is you can consider putting bar soap inside a nylon stocking um, or a thin sock and tying the end. That way it gives you a little bit more grip, uh, makes it easier to hold and then also easier to pick up if dropped. Pump bottles of soap, shampoo, conditioner, and face wash are much easier to manipulate than squeeze bottles. You don't have to have as much dexterity or hand function, and also they're less likely to be dropped when squeezed. Um, keep a reacher and a gra or a grabber available specifically for the shower to assist if things are dropped, or to grab that towel or any other items when you're finished. Wear slipper socks or shower shoes. Um, you don't need to wear your tennis shoes in the shower, but something as simple as the hospital socks that you often go home with or water shoes that you wear at the beach or the pool can really increase your safety 
These also allow water to get through so your feet can still be washed. Um, and of course, if your dexterity and your strength is good enough, you can remove them to wash your feet and put back on. But this is highly recommended to keep you from slipping. Um, bath mat with suction cups or non-skid strips are great. And then, as I mentioned, have a towel or a robe readily available and within reach so that you can dry off before exiting the shower. So washing. Um, some things to consider if you've had a stroke and you have a weaker side. So to wash your strong arm, you can hold a washcloth or sponge between your knees or across your thigh and move your strong arm across the cloth. This is often um, a solution that works if you don't want to have somebody help you. Um, after bathing, rather than hand drying your entire body, consider having a terry cloth robe and a pair of slipper socks. This way you can remain sitting, you'll be dry within minutes, and you can conserve your energy. Um, finding a good lotion or skincare product to apply once dry is important for skincare. So for ease of application, you can put lotion first on your thigh and then use your strong hand to apply it to the rest of your body. Um, and to put lotion on your strong hand, you can apply, if, um, if your weaker hand is open enough, you can apply lotion first to that palm and then rub your strong hand in the palm. So most often the rule of thumb with dressing is first in, last out in regards to your weaker side. So using this technique for the upper body and lower body dressing requires less active use and range of motion of your weaker side. Um, when selecting clothing options, try looking at items that are looser fitting and smooth fabrics. You don't want clothing that's so oversized that you're going to be tripping or getting caught, but things that um, give you a little bit more room allow you to have less range of motion of your weaker side and they slide on easier rather than getting stuck also helps conserve your energy. Um, another rule of thumb is to lay your clothes out before dressing and orient your clothing to avoid putting things on backwards or inside out. So rather than grabbing up your um, shirt right out of something and trying to, or if you lay it on your lap and have it oriented the way you would put it on, it definitely helps. Um, Apply belts or attach suspenders to clothing prior to putting on. That way, if you have less range of motion to reach around behind your back or over your shoulders, they're already attached. Again, seated is recommended. So while seated, it's easier to maintain correct orientation of your clothing and you're less likely to fatigue as compared to standing, which requires additional strength, endurance, balance, and attention to your safety. All right, so some more assistive devices that can help with clothing. So reachers or grabbers, dressing sticks, sock aids, shoehorns, foot funnels, and a dozen more. All of these may be used to further your independence with dressing tasks. Um, often these things are, are capable of using with just one hand, which is also great. Um, in addition to assistive devices to assist with clothing, um, you can have clothing adapted. So Velcro closures, we all know can be used for shoelaces. Velcro can also be used to replace buttons or difficult snaps. Um, zip ties, string, anything like that can be used as a zipper pull if your dexterity or your strength isn't quite there to manipulate zippers. Elastic shoelaces um, and waistbands, of course, are great. Elastic shoelaces are a great option if Velcro closures you don't quite like for your shoes, elastic shoelaces look um, as normal laces. They just expand to allow you to slip your foot into your shoe. Um, for women, consider pullover or front, front closure bras. Again, if you don't have that range of motion or that strength, it definitely mm -hmm. helps. Clip-on ties are great. And stretch bands for watches, clip-on earrings, things like that. In one. All right, so now talking about grooming. Um, grooming is difficult because it requires a lot of range of motion. Um, so a few things that can help to see the back of your head or your hair, if you place an extension mirror in your bathroom or a suction cup mirror nearby, um, you, it'll allow you to see the back of your head. You can use a wall-mounted hair dryer. Um, 
or a wall mount for a handheld hair dryer, just like for a handheld shower. Curling airbrushes, <clears throat> excuse me, are a great option for longer hair if you're typically drying and curling. It can combine the process. For shaving, electric razors are excellent. Um, for women, if you want to use a blade razor, I would consider a blade that already has shaving cream and lubricant built in so that you don't have to apply cream um, separately. But if you are using shaving cream, easy application, you can squeeze onto the back of your weaker hand or onto a countertop rim of the sink and then apply to your face or legs rather than just squeezing on directly if that's difficult. If you're utilizing your weaker hand during grooming tasks, you can consider a grip assist glove or applying grip assist coating like Dysum to handles. This will help increase your grip um, and make it less likely that something's going to slip. Grip assist coatings may also be used on countertops to keep items from sliding or moving around if you're using one hand to access them. All right, more grooming tips. So flip tops rather than screw tops for toothpaste are excellent. Um, if you're using one hand, Toothpaste can be squeezed into your mouth first, and then you can begin brushing. You can, again, use grip assist to help stabilize a toothbrush on the countertop, or you can hold a toothbrush between your teeth if you're able and apply toothpaste first. Consider using floss picks rather than traditional floss. Floss picks are disposable and can be manipulated with only one hand. To clean your dentures, consider a denture soak if needed and a suction cup brush. A very important thing is to keep your nails smooth and short to reduce the risk of skin damage to your palm. Also be sure that if you have a tighter hand, you're performing hand hygiene every day to wash well and make sure it's dry. If it, you have difficulty cutting your nails and toenails, an easy fix is to first soak in warm water and it softens up your nails and makes them easier to cut. And then to file your nails, consider taping a nail file to a flat surface and you can run your nails along the file. Moving on to laundry. Um, number one rule, keep your laundry up off the floor. Fewer things you have to bend over to grab the better and also makes you less likely to trip. Um, it's if safe for your means of mobility, you can consider a laundry basket that's on wheels. This way you can transport your laundry. If you keep it in your room or another room, you can transport it to the laundry room by sliding rather than carrying items. Also a laundry basket that has multiple compartments um, to go ahead and sort your laundry is great. That way it's less effort when you actually go to wash your clothes because they're already sorted. Laundry services are now also available in many areas um, if you're unable to do your laundry at home. So some services offer pickup and delivery of laundry, not just dry cleaning. So for shopping, um, when you're out shopping and getting groceries, first off, you can do as I do and consider use of a grocery delivery service. Almost every major grocery store now offers delivery or if not that they offer pickup at the store so you don't have to go in you can just pull up and they are loaded into your vehicle um, but also groceries and home supplies can be delivered you can select the time so you can also plan ahead if you're shopping in person consider using a mobilized cart um, if your endurance and your mobility is limited um, suction cup grabbers are excellent for retrieving items from a higher or lower shelf Again, grip assist gloves can help maintain grasp if you're utilizing your weaker hand. You can pay with a card or a mobile app, um, if possible, to avoid writing checks or handling money at a register. Also an easy thing when you're asked for paper or plastic, um, don't be afraid to ask for plastic and use bags that have handles. Also, you can ask for them not to be filled too heavy so that things are lighter and easier to carry. Driving, the most important thing for so many people. Um, per Virginia DMV, if you have had a stroke, you, your license is suspended for six months post-stroke unless you're otherwise cleared ahead of time by your physician saying you have fully recovered. Um, it is recommended that 
if you've had a significant change in function, that a certified driver rehabilitation specialist be contacted in prep for your return to driving. The National Mobility Equipment Dealers Association can also assist with car modifications and can give you information on if financial assistance is available. Um, if needed, adaptive driving courses are also often available at most DMVs to help individuals learn and understand their new equipment and adaptations. A handicap parking placard is also easily obtained from your physician um, through a brief application and a certification. They can also be renewed if needed. So work and leisure, the fun things. Um, if returning to work post-stroke in person, but you're no longer driving, many public transportation options are readily available in bigger communities. <clears throat> Uber, Lyft, taxis, buses, wheelchair vans, etc., cetera, um, may be good options for safe and reliable transportation to and from work. If you talk with your company about working from home options, especially now, um, more people are working remotely, so make sure you talk to your company. Most computers and phones now are equipped with voice recognition and dictation software. Um, this can help limit your need to type as you can just dictate to your computer or give commands. Computers and gaming systems for leisure, oh no, my light went out, um, also have adaptive keyboards and multiple mouse options. Um, adaptive controllers are also available to allow interaction regardless of your physical abilities. Many communities now, um, as Allison can tell you, are also offering adaptive sports, games, and leisure activities, so be sure to check with your local resources for availability. <laughs> All right, now moving on to some home modifications. So after illness or injury, the idea of transitioning back to your home, like I said, can be overwhelming. So the biggest areas you need to check for safety, bathroom, kitchen, bedroom. Some bathroom modifications. So the gist here is you want to make sure that you have safe access moving around in your bathroom and to your toilet. Um, also that you can manipulate water um, with single lever faucets are easiest to use. You can lower bathroom mirrors and you can replace a sink with one that's easy to roll under. Um, if countertop space is limited, you can wall mount soap dispensers um, that can be operated with one hand. And the bathroom toilet transfers are the most risky um, and often the most difficult because of their height. So toilet seat elevators um, can be used or a bedside commode over your toilet so that the, the height can be raised and often that's enough so that you don't have to um, use construction to add in grab bars for support. Toileting is also difficult because um, of range of motion and balance during hygiene. Toilet paper holders you want to make sure within reach, but also bidets are now very readily available. Portable options exist and just attachments so you don't have to switch out your toilet type. Most people think that a stall shower or walk-in shower um, is the only option if you're unable to step over the edge of a bathtub, but you can consider the use of a transfer tub bench this allows you to transfer into your tub or shower without having to step over the edge, and again, often negates the need for a grab bar installation. Um, also, consider getting a water temperature control unit if you have sensation changes. This prevents your risk of exposure to extreme temperatures that could result in skin damage. Adjustable shower heads and handheld showers are easily available, and they can be used with all members of the household regardless of ability. Again, lever controls are the most easy, um, easily operated. And then if you can have an area in your bathroom to sit, dry off, and potentially have your clothing available to change. A few kitchen items. Pull down shelving is now a great option um, for accessible cabinet storage rather than having a full cabinet renovation. Countertop shelving is also a good option for accessibility of frequently used items. Magnetic strips can be used to adhere to walls so you can have knives and other metal utensils so that you're not having to dig around in cluttered drawers. Um, if a refrigerator is difficult to access, try moving things to the door. That's easy, the doors are easier, more easily accessed from wheelchair level. Um, also consider using the front burners on your stove, that way you're not having to reach over and you reduce the risk 
of an accidental burn. Adaptive utensils are everywhere now. So from weighted utensils, spill proof, grip assist, one-handed cooking items, they're frequently used and available at all major retailers. If cooking from a wheelchair or a seated position, roll under countertops or table is preferred. Bedroom modifications. So closets are typically easier to access than drawers. Um, so if you don't have adequate closet space, you consider swapping out a dresser for a mobile hanging cart. And if a dresser is preferred, it's great if you can have access from the side. This is often easier than trying to face head on. So check the height of your bed. If a, bo a box spring may need to be removed to lower and risers can be used, that way you don't have to buy a new bed. Um, so layers are easier when it comes to making your bed. Duvets are an excellent option rather than multiple blankets and sheets. If rolling around in your bed or bed mobility from sitting to lying down or vice versa is an issue, you can consider adding rails. These are also easily available and often just require slipping in between your box spring and your mattress. Last thing, I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about emergency preparedness and some resources. So nowadays, many options exist for contacting emergency services in case of an emergency. Um, call buttons are great. So options range from a wearable necklace in a lanyard style that is activated by a push button. Also now many have fall detection. So if it thinks that you have fallen, emergency services will call you rather than you having to call them. Also bathroom and shower emergency buttons are available because that's the most likely place for a fall and also where we like the most privacy, those buttons can suction cup to your shower. Um, most companies now have plan options that extend the range. You can have in-home only or coverage that's just right outside your home or community with limitless um, availability so that you can contact someone regardless of where you are. Also some advanced options include smoke detection, carbon monoxide detection, and extreme temperature detection. Cell phones. Cell phones are easy, or at least can be. Um, cell phones are as basic or as high tech as you need them to be. All allow emergency um, speed dial contacts, and most of them have an emergency mode. So you can have your emergency contact, your blood type, any medications or advanced directives listed, and they are accessible from emergency services. Video calling devices are also great. So if someone isn't capable of coming in and checking on you every day, or if you prefer that they don't, um, Amazon and Google and some other sources have multiple devices that you can just video chat with. Um, this way family members and support systems can easily see and check in on you without having to be physically present. A few safety and mobility um, concerns. So entryways and hallways need to be able to clear a wheelchair or a mobility device. Often, especially in older homes, um, that's not possible. So you can try removing doors from hinges, having swing away hinges, or if construction comes into it, you can have pocket doors or folding doors. Uneven thresholds are something that you wanna look at immediately if it's in a high traffic area. If you're using a mobility device or even if you're walking independently, an uneven threshold is a fall risk that can be easily fixed. If unable to utilize standard doorknobs, again, as we've talked about, lever door handles are excellent. The location of door handles are also easily moved without a lot of change. Non-skid shoes are recommended on slick surfaces. Um, carpet can provide traction, but can also make mobility devices more difficult. So determine which surface is best for you. Secure carpet runners are a good option to provide traction on stairs. Handrails, of course, are wonderful. If you don't have a reinforced wall to add handrails um, near your stairs, there are many options now that you can secure them to the floor of the stair, so just check with your contractor. And stair lifts and platform lifts are always available for indoor or outdoor use. So the number one thing is you need to personalize your plan. So everybody in your household needs to plan ahead for an emergency situation. Know your emergency contacts, know your path, and know if, you're, if you have any emergency items that need to be with you if you have to exit quickly. So often that includes required medications. Um, it's great to have an emergency stash of medications that can prevent a lapse in your medications if an emergency situation 
exist. Also have a medication list available that can be provided to first responders. Based off of your physical capabilities and means of mobility, um, anticipate your emergencies. So besides natural disasters or a fall, if you have a medical condition or are taking a medication that can result in an emergency situation, keep that in mind. So changes in blood sugar, heart rate, blood pressure, dizziness, seizure disorder, um, keep those things in mind. Or if you have an alternative communication need, be prepared for that if emergencies need to be responded to. If you're alone, make sure that you have a way out um, and of course that you have somebody to contact. So a way that you can personalize your plan is with home access. So distributing keys is a great idea. I know it makes people nervous, the idea of giving keys out, but in your support system, have two or three people that have a key to access your home. If you have to contact someone in an emergency like a fall, but they are unable to get into your home, you're going to have to wait and be without help until first responders can forcibly access your home. A great source is called a Knox box. Um, models can hold one to two keys for your household and can be mounted on a door hanger or somewhere around your house and they're weather resistant. Um, fire companies and first responders are aware of these boxes and you can register with them. Um, this allows first responders to easily access your home it makes securing your home more quickly, um, and it reduces forced entry and property damage. Last thing on our list is fall prevention, another soapbox issue. So a fall should be avoided when at all possible, which we all know. No one ever intends to fall, but there are many things we can do that um, can safeguard your home and reduce the likelihood of a fall. So those lovely throw rugs that we use for decoration, throw them out. Um, if it moves or slides or bunches up when you step on it, it needs to go. Small, unsecured bathroom rugs are a leading cause of household falls, but area rugs are easily secured with rubber anti-slip liners. Always have proper lighting. Night lights and tap lights are easy fixes to provide lighting in hallways, bedrooms, closets, bathrooms. Um, uniform lighting is the safest, so there are no dark shadows or dark corners. If low vision is an issue, Consider a contrasting trim on doorways and edges of steps to reduce tripping. Always eliminate clutter and obstacles. So if you're having to step over something or change your gate pattern to get around things, then that needs to be fixed. Don't try to step over cords, wires. Those things can be moved, often just taped to your wall and out of the way. Um, let's see. So. More bathroom safety, you can have suction cups, floor mats, non-skid strips, all the things we mentioned before. Um, keep items within easy reach. So move frequently used kitchen items from low shelves or high shelves and keep them on your countertop in an orderly fashion so that you can eliminate the need for bending or reaching. Again, conserve your energy and simplify tasks. Fatigue is also a common cause of in-home falls. So avoid overdoing it, carrying items, transporting large things if you don't have to. Don't obstruct your view when you're walking and allow yourself rest breaks. Lastly, fire safety. Um, just keep in mind there are three things that are needed for a fire. Smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector, and fire extinguisher. So perform routine checks, make sure your batteries are good to go. Marking expiration dates on a calendar is a great way to make sure everything is up to date. Also, alternative alert systems are available for individuals who are hard of hearing. Heat, fuel, and oxygen are what's needed to get a fire going. So make sure that you're being safe with your heat sources and your electric sources. Um, candles, ovens, space heaters, give yourself room around them. And if there's any question about the safety, of course, don't use them. So paper, wood, clothing, chemicals, gases, all of these things are combustible. So when, again, when you're working with a heat source, make sure that these items are within safe operating distance. And then oxygen. When a fire starts, smoke is quickly replacing your oxygen, and that can incapacitate you quicker than the fire can itself. So be sure to keep your space ventilated and know how to escape smoke immediately if you're unable to extinguish. Otherwise, thank you guys for your participation today. Um, I hope that this was helpful and I've really enjoyed talking to you. Hey, does anybody have any questions for me? Thank you, Molly. That was some great information. I was taking notes of things I should be doing at my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're always our first ones to catch. I don't always not carry things I shouldn't. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions for Molly before we 
introduce our other two folks. There's some great tips in there for sure. Why, thank you. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. In the Richmond area, are there various organizations that might provide financial assistance to people who need to do home modifications? Are you aware of any of those? I um, honestly am not a aware of a ton but am hooking up no not to put you under a microscope allison but and working with her to get a list of community sources um but off the top of my head i'm not sure yes there is an agency um project homes that do assist with um modifications and actually i am working with them to learn a little bit more about how we can partner with them for our patients so great um, project homes and um, ramps and their nonprofit agencies. So they do assist with some of those changes and modifications that need to be made. Thank First you. point of contact I might suggest would be the local county. Each county has tremendous resources and they're also aware of what's available within each particular county, uh, especially Henrico and Hanover. I don't know about the city of Richmond, but I know Henrico and Hanover have excellent people in place that can help point you towards what, what is needed. That's great. Um, we, there do, is also Virginia Assistive Technologies, and they do some loaner equipment. So if you want to try a piece of equipment out before you go ahead and purchase it, um, they have a loaner closet for those things. And oh, wow. you can check on there and see if there's something that you might be able to borrow. Uh, and try for a few weeks to see before you make the purchase. So um, that's helpful as well. Thank you. Yes. Good question. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you so much, Molly. Um, I'm thank you, guys. To, uh, both to um, to Allison Shapiro, and I'm going to let Allison just speak a little bit about. Um, the website and the resources she has. Um, she's been doing some work here at the Institute with us. So I'll let Allison introduce herself first. Thank you. Allison Clark and Allison Shapiro have a good time with our names. So I don't know many Allisons besides Allison Clark. We, we often get confused in meetings. So my name is Allison Shapiro. And 18 years ago, I had two brainstem strokes 24 hours apart and I was profoundly injured. And 15 years ago, I began teaching ways that we can help ourselves recover. And I've been doing that in various different places, including now with Alison Clark's help, I'm doing it via video to inpatients at Sheltering Arms Institute um, twice a month, for which I'm very grateful. I have a website. I teach both stroke survivors and other people with brain injuries and caregivers and often teach them together, both in an inpatient and an outpatient basis. I do this as a work of my heart. I don't charge for it except when I'm giving a class that requires supplies. So I want to give you some information about how to reach me. If you have questions or there's something that I can do to help you, I would be glad to do that. And I've made this little PowerPoint slide that I'm going to go ahead and put up because it's easier to see it. Okay. So I made a video. This is where it's available on YouTube. You can watch it, 17 minutes long. There are six of us stroke survivors on it. Um, what I teach is a lot about how we affect our own recoveries and things that we can do and ways we can approach the process of recovery that will help us maximize our outcomes. This is my email address. You can reach me here. This is the name of the website, and this is the website address. And this is an easy way to find me and get information to me or ask me questions. Is there anything else that you would like me to do, Allison Clark? Nope, that is great. I would highly suggest everybody taking a look at these resources. Um, Allison is doing some incredible work, and we're very, very grateful to have her uh, be on the team for Sheltering Arms Institute. So I, I take, I would advise you all to really 
uh, take a look at the YouTube video um, and visit some of Alice's resources. So thank you so much, Allison. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Stu Neal. And Stu um, has been leading the Virginia Stroke Survivor and Caregiver Support Group um, at the old St. Francis Hospital for some time. So I'm going to let Stu talk a little bit about the initiative in 2021. Uh, my name is Stu Neal, and uh, like Allison, four years ago, I woke up on the bathroom floor and found my world had changed dramatically. Half my body was paralyzed. I couldn't move, um, and uh, it's been a long learning experience getting from there to here, but I'm one of the lucky ones. I've tried hard, and the hard work pays off, and I got involved with uh, sheltering arms, coming back, trying to give back to the community and, and being able to, to relate to other stroke uh, survivors with some of my experiences on what has worked and what hasn't worked. And we put together a great group of people that for two or three years met once a month and uh, we all learned from each other. So uh, in the meantime, uh, we set up a Facebook page that's very good. It's called Virginia Stroke Survivor and Caregiver Education Network. And it is a closed Facebook page, which means that anything you do or say on there can only be seen by the other members of the group. So it's not out there for the public. And uh, I found some of my biggest questions I had weren't answered by doctors. They were answered by other stroke survivors that have been there and learned through their experiences. So I want to share mine any way that we can. And we're starting up our group virtually. We're going to try it anyway <laughs> uh, next month. Uh, and uh, hope you all can join us and meet some of the other people and have any of the questions you might have that have not been answered, answered. So thank you, Alice, I'll turn it back to you. Allison C. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Stu. Um, can you just share it's the date, is it the 27th of January, the next meeting? Do we cast that in stone? Oh, okay. I think we said the fourth Wednesday of the month at two o'clock. Is that right, Stu? The fourth yep. Wednesday would be the 22nd. 22nd. Oh, excuse me, I'm looking at 2020. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure that we can get the date out and um, I'll get, I have the emails from folks that are on the call so we can make sure we send them an invitation. So thank you all. If there's no further questions, um, I really want to thank Molly and Allison and Stu for their time today. And um, we are hoping to do our next community transition event in March of 2021. So topics and uh, invitations will be coming soon. And I thank you all so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And to all that might see these after the fact, we all look forward to meeting with you. <laughs> Absolutely, Stu. Well said.